Hola, Animigos, and welcome to Keyframers. I'm your host, Stephen Shaw, but you may know me as at Shashaw. And I'm your host, David Korshid, also known as at David K. Piena. Right now, we'll be giving a quick overview of the techniques used to build this awesome animation. Our show is supported by our sponsors, CodePen at CodePen.io, CSS Tricks at CSS-Tricks.com, and viewers like you. You can pledge at Patreon.com slash Keyframers uh, to support us, and links are available below. Yeah, and hey, you can also watch the full process of creating this animation from scratch after this with a lot more details about each of the techniques that we cover, so stay tuned. If you have any questions, ask us in the chat or leave a comment below, and we'll be happy to answer. All right, so the tilt. We want this to be as simple as possible to add the tilt, and so um, in order to do that, we didn't want to have to manage state within React because React schedules state updates on its own. So instead, we have a custom use tilt hook. And so this use tilt hook returns a ref. And that ref is assumed to be placed right in your um, in the div, just so that we could directly manipulate that div, set CSS variables, and do all of that. So let's go over what this use tilt hook is doing. Uh, first of all, it accepts active, and that's because we only want to be keeping track of mouse positions in the in the slide in question if it is actually the active slide. And so that's what this conditional here is doing. It's checking, first of all, if the, uh, if the ref exists, like did we actually place the ref on a DOM node, and is it active? If so, track the mouse position. If not, then just return. And of course, if it becomes active at a later time, then this effect is going to run again, and we are going to be able to uh, to actually track the mouse. So um, we have internal state over here, and that's just because we are tracking things in order to uh, to place them on the elements. In fact, it's not exactly necessary, but we just have it there. Um, don't worry about it. So we have an events listener for the mouse move, and that's keeping track of the mouse position relative to the actual uh, bounding client's rect of the elements. And so um, we're capturing the mouse X and the mouse Y in order to get the position of the mouse X in terms of the left and right bounds of the rect, we subtract it from the left. So we're saying, for example, let's say the mouse is at uh, 50 and the left is at 20 and the width is a total of 80 then we want to say that the mouse is at 50% because it's between 20 and 80 exactly in the middle. And so we want to represent that as a number between zero and one, which is what this PX is. And so that's what this uh, math expression evaluates to. We do the same for Y using top and height instead of left and width. And so again, to summarize, we're just getting the mouse position relative to the width and the height of the element. We set those as CSS custom properties, also known as CSS variables, to PX and PY directly on the elements. And then we add that event handler right on the uh, on the elements on mouse move. And in fact, we could change this to yeah. L. Yeah, and, and we do we do that uh, tracking there because the, the ref can change uh, in in mm -hmm. uh, the React lifecycle. Um, so yeah. by changing it there, we're able to unmount it um, as... as um. Yeah, so we take those CSS variables, and let's jump into CSS land here a little bit. On line 152, um, right now we're getting a value between 0 and 1. However, when we're dealing with tilt, we want it to tilt either to the left or to the right, and we want it to be based on the center we don't want it to be based on the left or the right, so we have to do a little bit more math. So since we get a number between 0 and 1 for px, we subtract 0 0.5. And so now that's going to give us a number between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. And that's exactly what we want here. So we have that for the double dash x variable and the double dash y variable. We apply those to rotate y and rotate x. And so we're getting a fraction of that 45 degree max tilts for both x and y and you could change those values and see how it's affected but if essentially we are multiplying that value between 0.5 and 5 to 45 degrees um and so just in your head make sure to divide this by two and you're going to get the maximum range so 
what is that? 22.5. Anyway. <laughs> so, so that's how that math sort of works out there. Again, tweak those values as you want. If you want a more dramatic effect or a more subtle effect. Um, yeah. That's how you get that animation. And of course, this animation is only active when we have that data active attribute right over here. So it's not going to apply to anything that's not active. And right. also only when it's hovered. Right. And we and we get that uh, 3D effect on the text uh, because we're just transforming that that content uh, forward on the on the Z axis up here. So that inner content is actually closer to to the user. So you get that nice depth effect when you're rotating around the around the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah, that's that's kind of a short overview of of the of the use tilt and how we how I implemented that. If you'd like to see more, go back and check out the full live video where we uh, break down this entire process and and go into more detail on on everything. So uh, check that out. Like and subscribe. Do you know all that all that great stuff. Mm -hmm.